I've got the picture to prove it. Bon dia, alegria to you. It's Munson here from expatsportugal.com with the Good Morning Portugal show, live stream and podcast. It's Feel Good Friday, everybody. And as if to prove it on this, the fifth Friday, is when Mia Esmeris joins us for the Portuguese language and culture Q&A. So all those questions, and you know what we say in this community, there's no such thing as a silly question except the one that doesn't get asked, leaving you in ignorance. So please do not be left in ignorance. There's enough of that in the world at the moment, isn't there? Um, just if you have a question to ask about the language or the Portuguese culture, then uh, fire it into the comment uh, and the chat. Uh, a little bit later on when Mia's here. You could actually, maybe it's a good idea to pop it in now and I can star the comment because you, as you've noticed this week, we are absolutely inundated. The audience isn't growing that rapidly. Uh, the like button isn't smashed yet, but we have so many comments and chats. I just cannot keep up anymore and we're going to have to do something about that. Quite, quite what? I do not know at the moment, but I'm sure we'll get around to sorting something out uh, to sort out the uh, comment mountain uh, that we're delighted in one sense to have, but um, it can be a little bit uh, difficult to manage, but we'll find a way. Technology, I'm sure, is just creeping ahead a few millimeters in front of us, and we'll be thinking of a solution in Silicon Valley right now, and I'm sure between us, the great minds of the Gumper community will be able to come up with something as well. Whether we'll be able to agree on anything is another matter, but I'm sure we'll have lots of suggestions in this vibrant and creative and wonderful place that is Gumperville, Gumperdom. Baldy Locks is here in Gumperville, Gumperdom. Hola, Gumpers. Hope all is well. Oh, everyone is well, in fact, is what you said. I don't want to misquote you there, Baldy Logs. And I'm noticing in my haste, I'm doing that as well. I'm slightly changing the comments, and this is how terrible things happen uh, in, in the world of social media, isn't it? I didn't say that. I hope everyone is well. I didn't say I hope all is well. Oh, okay. Um, so that's I'm not saying Baldy Locks is like that at all. I suspect he isn't. I suspect Baldy Locks is a very easygoing character. And uh, yes, I think everyone is well. We're about to find out, Baldy Locks. How are you? More to the point. And uh, Deagle's here, born dear car from a blue sky Belfast. Today might just be a very good day in Belfast. It's breaking news before 10 a.m. Excellent. Yes, we're standing by and as uh, uh, keen to know. Uh, Deagle, thank you for being here this morning. 15 minutes completed yesterday on Memorize, and that is 118 days from the 1st of January. Isn't that amazing? Well done. Well done on that incredible achievement. So you feel free to share a little bit with us. And of course, yeah, you may have um, some questions that you might want to lift off the page of Memorize, so to speak, and ask Mia. When, you're, when you say this, are you supposed to say it like this or like that? And when I've heard Portuguese people say this, it doesn't sound like what it says in the book, et cetera, et cetera. T-Ducks here, bon dia, Algria Gumpers, Dom Lisboa, Quiente e Insolorado. I think we do need to have a look at the weather this morning. And what I'm going to do, so that I don't forget and move on. And then at the end of the show, I think to myself, ah, I did say I'd do the weather, didn't I, 90 minutes ago. Uh, I am creating the share right now so we can have a quick look at the weekend weather, the weekend ahead, the bon fin de semana. Oh, oh, moved out of my house. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yay, visiting with Rika in southern Finland. Morning, Rika. Morning, Taxi. Morning, Suze. Missed the show yesterday. You're so forgiven, Suze. And we will both tune in today. Yay. Uh, so, uh, Rika. And lovely to have you among us as well this morning. Portuguese proverbs, folks, coming right up here. Uh, reach those who don't get tired. Ah, so a friend, a friend, a good friend is somebody who will listen to all your nonsense, I suppose, and not tire of it. Al cansa quem não cansa. Yeah, cansa, cansada, cansa. Tired. Agaram se os passaros, passaros. There you go, Maxine. You'll be proud of me, and you, Antonio F. Agaramze os passaros, p 
Pelo bico y os homens pela lingua. Birds are grabbed by the beak and men by the tongue. My goodness. Are they men grabbed by the tongue or are they grabbed by the ear using the tongue? I mean, not literally. Um, Aguamol en pedra dura. Tanto de ate kefura. Soft water on hard stone. So much that it breaks. Yes, scissor, scissors, paper, rock. We know that water wins in the end, don't we? Over the hard stone. And there's evidence of that all over Portugal, geologically speaking. Of course, so true, isn't it? Yes, excellent life advice wrapped up in those beautiful sayings there. Uh, Portuguese proverbs with a little bit of uh, universal human understanding uh, peppered throughout. Thank you very much, T-Duck, for those. Have you been getting those off the uh, internet or are they still coming from the um, Borda Dagua? Moaz is here, bon dia, Carl, it's It's amazing, he says. In only two minutes, we have four people ahead of me. Yeah, it gets kind of competitive, doesn't it, before the show's even started. And uh, T-Duck, obrigado for the Portuguese proverbs. They do help me in learning the language. Every little bit helps, doesn't it? And um, talking of uh, d ducks, uh, Daring Ducky, is it Daring Ducky 69? Um, you need to know, you need to see this. Uh, this is quite incredible. Some naughty, naughty, uh, not Portuguese, some naughty, naughty English kids came over to uh, Portugal, to Lisbon, uh, with one thing in mind. And I'm going to sh share with you that one thing, because they're quite naughty. It had people dialing 112. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, thank you very much for T-Duck for the heads up on this. It's quite, quite an extraordinary uh, happening <laughs> that happened. Jerry, what sort of message is that to send me this time in the morning? Uh, that obviously needs some contextualized. Everything needs contextualization these days, doesn't it? Things can become quite random and abstract very quickly and um, also cause offense. Um, so I need to find, yeah, I'll go uh, at the risk of crashing the show again um, by switching on WhatsApp. Um, T Duck, I wonder if you could stand by and send in the link to the uh, newspaper article, but not yet, because we're going to show the Instagram page of Daring Ducky 69 Not connected with T-Duck, well, at least I don't think so. That said, never seen him in the same room at the same time to prove that. Um, so nice to see you, mi amigo, from uh, Moaz to Baldy Locks this morning. And uh, James, what's it going to be next week? They named – it, can, it, can someone find out for me if there is a name a – name, uh, there's a data limit, basically, to the name you can have on YouTube. Presumably, YouTube don't let you have a huge, endless name. They put a limit on it somewhere. But we need to get James under control here, don't we? Uh, he'll be back on Monday with a thought or two from the Redwoods, of course, uh, before 9 o'clock on a Monday morning. Really enjoying that feature with James. Um, this week, he, of course, is named, uh, they named this fruit after me. Um, and it really does. What was it? Who somebody said to me this week? I think it was the wonderful Paul. I'm hoping to get on the show, history and geography teacher, newly resident in Portugal from the United States. And I can't remember what he said now, uh, but I want to get him on the show to talk about geography and history for us grown ups. Uh, but he used to teach kids, but he's a fascinating fella. Bon dia, Gumpers, Felice Sexta. I told us, and I honestly can't remember what I, I thought of him because I saw a picture of a banana, and I'm not sure if he will be impressed by that or not. Um, Dimitri Martin quote of the day I wrapped my Christmas presents early this year, but I used the wrong paper. <laughs> we had some great paper, didn't we? Um, <laughs> I can't remember. I won't ruin the joke because I can't remember exactly what was what was uh, on it, but it was hilarious. Um, and I'm sure we shared that with you on the screen. Not this Christmas necessarily, maybe the one before. But anyway, uh, I wrapped my Christmas presents early this year, but I used the wrong paper. See, the paper I used said happy birthday on it. I didn't want to waste it, so I just wrote Jesus on it. Mm. You can't, you, we're struggling to be more unseasonal with that particular joke, but worthy of inclusion nonetheless. Uh, thank you very much, uh, James, for that. They named this fruit after me. Day! Uh, bon dia, James. I was wondering if you can practice in Portugal. <laughs> Are you talking about his jokes? <laughs> he needs all the practice he can get. <laughs> Love the Jesus birthday joke. But anyway, went down well with Moas. Uh, Como estás? Estás na California? Verdad? Quando estás vindo para Portugal? Um, that's when you come in then. Yes, yeah, good question, isn't it? Baldilock seems to have been um, in that in that pattern, that holding pattern of greeting us in the mornings. But we're not hearing much about the Portuguese plans, are we? Um, if you, you don't have to tell us, obviously, Baldilocks, we are. Um, you know, your secret is your secrets are safe. Well, they're probably not, are they? Um, discretion is the better part of our valor here. 
and that's probably not true either. Tell us if you want to, and if you don't, that's fine too. That's probably the best way of putting it, isn't it? Uh, in US law, we are nosy, but we can also cope if you if you need to um, hold, keep your powder dry. Uh, in US law, I'm allowed to practice psychotherapy as a California resident, gray area. Is that like the Bay Area, but you can practice in the gray area? Uh, for California residents, also gray area. Okay, well, the, it's the area. I mean, nothing's black and white in the in your work, is it? So that would follow, obviously. Matty's here, uh, who I think enjoyed greatly the uh, the webinar we had last night. Excellent presentation from uh, Matthew and from Thomas, living comfortably in an older Portuguese house, and not a single silk kimono to be seen. I mean, that's my idea of comfort, but. Uh, they had other ideas, and very good ideas they were too. Discovered last night what a French drain was. Do you know what a French drain is? It's not a person. It's not. It's not that. It's not that person. You, you the, the English people, will avoid at a dinner party. French drain is um, a type of. Um, it's a type of drain actually. <laughs> they named this fruit after me. I'm still here in California. I will be in Portugal by mid August of this year. Yes, plans revealed. We like that, Baldy Locks. Thank you very much. Residency is great because California is very stubborn about letting Californians give up residency. Why is that? Oh, for tax purposes. So technically, unless we get we specifically get unresidented, oh, we remain. Yeah, you can't, they can't have it both ways, can they? We remain residents of the state despite actually – it's like the Hotel California, the state of California, isn't it? You, you can go, but you can never leave, or is it the other way around? Um, we remain residents of the state. Residents of the state. Which sounds like an insult an American would give somebody else living in a non-democratic part of the world, right? But we remain residents of the state despite actually living elsewhere. Bottom line answer to your question phew, is yes for now, online. So yes, he can practice. And um, are there spaces? That's the next question then. What do you charge and how many spaces are there in your on your uh, waiting? Uh, do you have a waiting list or can people walk straight in? Uh, for therapy. Some of us need it here, James. Uh, fantastico, Baldilocks. Will your arrival be to stay? Visa or to visit? Oh, he's probing. He's probing here. And if you're anywhere in the Lisboa region, I hope we can connect in person. Absolutely. And come to the Silver Coast meet up too. Excuse me. And yes, please do that, uh, Baldilocks. Okay. And you know what I'm going to start doing? And you've probably been saying this to me all the time anyway. Just ignore the at quotes, Carl. Stop being so nosy and reading out other people's comments. Well, I'm going to start. I'm going to have to start doing that. And what's more, what I'm going to ask for as well is that you, if it's for me, you see, if we put at Carl, capital letters, put, put Carl in capital letters or question in capital letters, and that might help me. It might not, but we've got to make a start on this, haven't we? Uh, morning all from Chris, who has an upcoming gig. Now, let's see if I can share this on the screen. Um, without um, making everything crash. And um, I'm saving up now. All, you know all those um, uh, little coins you get on your travels in Portugal? I'm putting them in a special pot now so that we can afford a better than two megabyte uh, computer for the show. Chris Smith um, is, um, I don't know if you're going to be uh, accepting small change, probably big notes, right, for the uh, bluegrass gig that's coming up the lisbon bluegrass sessions and pizza party um that is on the 4th of may my wedding anniversary actually may the 4th be with you and uh, i'm going to download this picture now at the risk of causing some terrible injury to the show and so oh, maybe this is easier to do it like this uh, when it's done via facebook and not whatsapp either way it is um it is meta extending its tendrils is it not into our daily life. And I got some lovely, a lovely picture of some lovely poppies for you this morning. What are poppies in Portuguese, I wonder? So here's the gig coming up May the 4th, pizza party and bluegrass session. Great poster as well, Chris. There you go. 4th of May, 9 p.m. Let me just take your comment out of the way so we can see what's going on here. Um, May the 4th be with you, the Lisbon bluegrass sessions and pizza party and uh, reservations Email info. Oh, you've got the hotel doing the work. That's very good. And that's going to be at the Rossio Hostel. Uh, the info at rossiohostel.com if you want to make a reservation and um, order your pizza ahead of time. I suppose that's what is going to be happening there. And uh, it seems only right as well to put the event link into the chat as well so that you can find it that way over there on Facebook. That looks great, Chris. Great job. I mean, here you are on tour in Portugal and managing to squeeze in a gig or two as well. Top man. Renaissance man, no less. Okay. Um, I'm, it's, it's taking a great act of, of will on my part to not read every single comment. Okay. 
Um, and you know I'm coming from a good place with that. This is about inclusion, isn't it? It's about being part of a community. But when, yes, the clue is in the at, meaning it's not for me, it's at somebody else. I get it now. Oh, I see. <laughs> An expat therapist with a shorter name would help. Yes, thank you, Suze. Um, bon dia, alegria, a todos, felices de feira. Uh, Clint hasn't left the office yet. He, well, he, enjoyed the sh he enjoyed listening to the show with you so much, he actually moved in. So I guess we still have him in our grasp. Whoa! <laughs> he enjoyed the last show, but I haven't given him the keyboard yet. No, no, he's got to work his way up to that sort of level of privilege. Um, and what happens here in the Gumper community is um, as, a, as an apprentice Gumper, you have to do the bidding of your, of your Gumper mentor, who is Francis. Uh, this morning, Clint. So if Francis needs a cup of tea or a bit of breakfast, it is it is your duty to, to provide those those needs. That's how it works here, isn't it, everybody? Um, and um, uh, that yes, the picture of the Bon Dia Alegria, uh, you've reminded me there, Francis, of the uh, of the cafe and Lisboa that Jean found for us. And uh, let's have a look at that as well. Oh, the, the, the poppies first. So I was out with the dogs this morning and I thought you might like to see these beauties. Uh, they, aren't they amazing, the way that poppies grow? Pretty much anywhere. I mean, that's that looks quite a luxurious setup for poppies, doesn't it? Growing actually in earth and, and uh, among other plants there. Often they burst through the tarmac, don't they, or the paving stones. But I thought that was lovely with the morning sun uh, on those. And uh, here, back to Lisbon then, this, this greeting, this greeting Jean at the airport. Let, let's do a bit of Portuguese. Given that um, we've got uh, Mia Esmeres coming and joining us, and you can ask any questions you want, about uh, the Portuguese language and culture. Sumos, anybody? Naturais uh, and batidos. What are batidos? That's quite a good thing to know, especially as we go into summer and we might like a refreshing drink of that kind. Bon dia, Gria, of course. I think you know, we all know that, don't we? But a joyful good day to you. Sumos is juices. So sumos naturais will be natural juices. Some of, some of your lovely Portuguese freshly squeezed orange juice. Oh, wouldn't that be lovely right now? And the batidos, if I am correct, is a milkshake, everybody. So thank you very much, Gene, for sending that in. Superb. Um, I, I'm going to have to have a little bit of a... Um, where's the prof when you need him? Because um, I want to have a, a nice, um, long and luxurious sip on my tea while the Today in Portuguese History theme... Tune. Have I upset the prof? He's not anywhere to be seen this morning. And what's more, uh, quite often, if he's not going to be here, he sends in something ahead of time. Can so, please page the prof, paging the prof. What's going on here this morning? Um, I think I'm going to play the music anyway. Let's see if we can summon him um, via the music, shall we? So here we go. So you, we, I'm playing that ahead of time, hoping that there may well be a... Uh, oh, turn the microphone up a little bit too much there. I'm hoping that there might be some Portuguese history today. So if anyone's, uh, if anyone can get in touch with Prof just to make sure he's all right, that'd be excellent. Um, helping him look for corpses on balconies in Idealista. That picture is, has, has proven to be um, quite a contribution to things this week. Uh, Clint, uh, did you get to see that yesterday? Because this is the picture that uh, is being spoken of. Where has it gone? Oh, here it is. Have you, are you trying to add to our collection, Francis, of cracking Portuguese property photographs? We have got a group somewhere. I'm sure if you search for Portuguese property pics, uh, you will find this. And that, I think that may well be our cover photo. So keep up the good work there. Um, there are ex other excellent Portuguese property photographs, of course. Uh, available right across all the real estate portals of Portugal. Uh, and um, I'm still trying to ignore the comments. What are you saying to each other that I can't see? Bon dia, Gria, from a very sunny Serra de Pescaria. Pescaria, I'm going to go for Serra de Pescaria. And uh, that's probably wrong, but we can come back and ask Mia, of course, because we've got Mia after nine this morning. Uh, Buddy, good morning to you. Thank you very much for being here this morning. And Pete, amazing Pete, you're telling us on Facebook about uh, your anniversary of of, uh, of the property purchase. You've done an amazing amount of work in a year, mate. Bon dia, Can Mia tell us the difference between enthusiasmodos 
excitado and animado. And we know, don't we, where Pete is leading us with that, but I'm going to ask anyway. Cindy B, morning to you. Bon dia, Gria, from a beautiful Nadadoro. How are you, Nads, this morning up there in Nadadoro, Cindy B? Um, Sue's congratulations and bon voyage to Portugal. That is an at comment, strictly speaking, isn't it? Um, but we're going to read that out because that's what exactly what we want to be saying to Sue's and Taxi. Oh, my goodness. And this is where we hadn't even started the show. All those comments that I've just read were all put in before the show even started. With his nice intro music, Carl is here. And Baldy Locks is on the forum there if you want to speak to uh, Baldy Locks on the Expats Portugal forum. ExpatsPortugal.com forward slash community, of course. Um, nice, Deagle. We're not worthy. Yeah, that's on your achievement, isn't it, Deagle? Amazing, amazing progress with learning the language. Hi, everyone here and abroad. Nice one, Laura P. How are you doing this morning? Pam's in as well. Bon dia from uh, Pam Smith this morning. And Elra Linda's in as well. How are you doing, Elra? It's been a while. David Durham's in as well. What's happened this morning? Hola, bon dia de Lisboa. Anyone know uh, a good wind compose like software for Windows 11? Okay, um, so you're you're writing some music by the sound of it. That's a composition software, is it? I, I, I don't know. Uh, who, who would know that? Uh, uh, just prepare for scoffing from the Apple community, David. Pa, you want GarageBand. I've had an Apple for 300 years, and I've always used GarageBand. Um, but um, I don't know. Oh, but Pete is straight in. Um Kaijo to do lijo. Oh, no, you see, there you go. I, yeah, there you go. I knew it. I, I, <laughs> He's just asking a question about software. Stop it, Apple owners. My name merely represents my magnificent stature. Erotic novel entry, uh, he said. Um, I think for James. You think for James, do you? Well, you should. I wonder how much you charge for that. Can you think for me as well? Um, I, I, it's not a matter. It's not a, no secret. To, for anyone to learn here that I have I have been trying to give up thinking for many decades now. Um, so maybe that's the solution is to get you to think for me, Francis. Um, I don't need, I don't want, just need to know, just give me a quote um, and uh, just take care of it. I don't need to know what you're thinking about because um, that would be, that would be uh, ruining the point of the whole exercise. Okay. Uh, what's this? I am detecting resistance, James. Oh, she's calling out the therapist here. Not like you at all. Mr. Holly, what's up with that? The therapist has been called out. Stay tuned to find out what happens. 100 to 1 uh, to change the light bulb and 99 to share the experience. What is that? How many communitarians does it take uh, to change a light bulb? I miss, oh, how many Californians? There you go. How many, see, that was an at comment and I missed it um, because either the punchline was meant to be an at as well, or the joke was meant to be shared in the first place. It's not working, is it? How many Californians does it take to change a light bulb? One to change the light bulb and 99 to share the experience. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, sent you a quick video on WhatsApp. Gary, you can't do this to me. That has causes so much trouble, but we're going to go in anyway, I think, and have a look and just maybe if I shut down other applications like Microsoft Teams, which I will do with great pleasure, I have to say. Quit. Goodbye, Microsoft Teams. Outlook. Can I shut that as well? Um, you, you can join vicariously with the pleasure of shutting down all the, these uh, MS apps. That doesn't mean I'm an Apple fan, by the way, you Apple gloaters. Um, but uh, it gives me great pleasure to shut down Teams, which goes, just does seem to go, it just mark me out as being very much of a team player. <laughs> <laughs> a maverick, I would like to think. Hold on a minute. You see, you shut down Microsoft Teams, and what does Microsoft do? If there's something's come up on my screen saying loading Microsoft Teams. You you have no idea how much I hate Teams and Microsoft right now. That somebody actually probably designed it to do that. Close window, goodbye. And I'm going to unpin you from my taskbar, which probably means in Microsoft language, please pin me on 27 times so I can never escape from you for the rest of my life. Mm. I think I need your services, James. Ah, oh, okay. Um, Poppy, pa, pa, papoila. There you go. Um, so, muito papoila uh, this morning. Thank you very much for that, Elra. And what is the average airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Are they buzzing around your apartment block at the moment, T Duck? Aren't they amazing? They they are incredible. It's going to be fast. I don't know how fast, but it's going to be fast. Bon dia, Gumpers, from Sarah as well. And Jim, a new name. Hello, Jim. Jim Rinchuzo is asking for more ice for your cake. Oh, sorry. 
is asking for more ice for your Coke, not your cake, considered an ugly American. What are ugly American things? That's a new thing. It sounds like we should have a list. Top. So straight in then, maybe, possibly, into the chart of ugly American things in Portugal. Warm Coke is not a bon. Well, that's fair enough. It, you know, there's nothing ugly about that. I, in fact, warm Coke itself is ugly. You don't, why, why? It's bad enough, isn't it, c committing that health crime to your body without it being warm? And don't get me wrong, I like a Coke as much as the next Coke-loving man or woman. And um, I don't. What's happened, Jim? I think we need to reach out and hug hug Jim, who might have had a, a difficult experience asking for um, my gelo. Uh, here in Portugal. Interesting. Um, TGIF from Jeff. <laughs> bon fim semana, Jeff. How you doing? Great to see you last night. Bon dia todos from Jeff. Um, and uh, you just can't get enough Portuguese language and culture, can you, Jeff? Question, is there a cure for track? I'm going to say track to bottom so that we just so I can say bottom in a very British way. Um, is there any? Is there a cure for track to? Americans would say, is that an ugly American thing to say? Track to butt. I got a bad case of tractor butt. Um, is there any cure for tractor butt or bottom? 36 hours with no bum sensation and counting. Some people pay good money for that, uh, Pete. Uh, they may wish to know your secret. Drew, we haven't seen for a while either. Bon dia, Australia. Brilliant picture, Drew. Remind us, what's your dog's name? Uh, Antonio F is in. Bon dia a todos. I wonder what tractor bottom is in Portuguese. Can you help us with that? <laughs> Thank, thanks for showing that. Love it. We don't tire of it, do we? We do not tire of that. Rebel Mama's in with a capital. Hola. And the noops. Caps lock is on. Have you been shouting at people on the internet again, Rebel Mama? Or is your caps lock always ready for a political bust up? <laughs> Since Prof is missing ego. Oh, thank you, Elra, stepping in. Don't need you, Prof. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, oh, you should see the look on Mia's face. She just came in while that was playing, and that is the national anthem like she's never heard it before, I suspect. Um, so today in Portuguese history, I'm only kidding. Uh, what, have we, has anyone made contact with the prof yet? I'm a bit worried about the prof. Uh, it's not like him not to show at all, but uh, standing in your stead uh, for the time being, prof is Elra. And uh, since prof is missing here, go today in Portuguese history, 1875, Portugal approves the law that abolishes slavery in all Portuguese overseas territories. Um, a good moment uh, to to recall um, the abolition of slavery and, and to think about how we ever just did that to people and actually continue to do that to people around the world. So thank you very much for, for that, Elra. It's not over yet, is it? Uh, it's just different now. Okay, uh, let me take the today in Portuguese history slide off, um, and uh, we we should uh, let's 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 reach out for the prof. I'll do it myself. If no one else, I'll send him a WhatsApp message at the risk of breaking the show. Hola, gente. Sunny and warm, and it's the forecast as far as the forecast shows. Okay, so let's have a quick look at that before we welcome Mia onto the screen uh, this morning. Talking of the weather, let's have a look at the weekend weather, shall we? And um, see what's going on around the country. Let me just move your comment out of the way. The comments are, are, are leaving the screen very slowly. Everything's moving quite slowly this morning. So let's have a look at this weather, shall we? Uh, in the capital, 16 degrees. 61 in the Fahrenheit. And do you think, is it? have you got used to this, Americans, now me doing it in centigrade? This is a big job of work for me to convert all of these to Fahrenheit. But just so you've got the, 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 the at least one comparison, 16 degrees, 61 Fahrenheit in the capital, and a sunny couple of days. Uh, we, although only going up to 14 and 15 today and tomorrow, uh, that's 57 and 59. Then it gets a bit cloudy on Sunday and a bit more rain to start the week. And then it gets sunny again by next Wednesday. But the temperatures aren't high. In Porto, we have 16 at the moment with a 21 degree high. Nice. And uh, a somewhat uh, cloudy weekend with highs of 20 and 17. Coimbra, look at that. 28 and 27 today and tomorrow. Often this happens, doesn't it, in central Portugal? And uh, Coimbra enjoying those highs and a sunny weekend. Or maybe a bit cloudy on Sunday, 
uh, and cloudy to start the week. But no rain forecast in Coimbra at the moment. Faro is a lot colder, a good 10 degrees colder than Coimbra. Um, but still, nice sunny day today and tomorrow. Cloudy Sunday and uh, some rain midweek of next week. So there you go. Those are the uh, principal places. Should you wish to know about Aveiro, Beja, Braga, Castelo Branco, Evra, Laria, Santarang, Vizio, Braganza, Guarda, Porto Alegre, Estubo, Viana de Castelo, Vila Real, and even the autonomous regions, Azores and Madeira. Ask for them by name. And I will return there because now, folks, it is time to welcome to the screen with great pleasure, Mia. Mia Hi. Hi. Hi, Carl. How are you? Hola. How are you? See, we're doing great here. I just did your Porto weather. Uh, what is mm -hmm. sorry? What is the adjective for the, the tripeters of Porto? Are you the Portoans, or what? What is what is the collective name for the Porto people? Uh, Portoans. Portoans. Okay. Or we yeah. have and this other name, which is Tripeiros. Tripeiros, yes, the tripeaters, of course. The, 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 the Lisboetas are the lettuce eaters, aren't they? As you would expect. And yeah, then exactly. up in the north, you prefer yeah, a bit the of tripe. Tri no. yeah. <laughs> yes, that, that's not your thing personally, though. I don't think you're very partial to the tripe, are you? Uh, well, I like I, I ate it just yesterday, so... More or less. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were vegetarian. I thought tripe would be the last thing on your mind. Uh, but yeah, you're, you're traditional. I, I would like to because of the animals, because I love animals. Uh, but, you know, it's not so easy in Portugal. Uh, but that's maybe okay. an excuse because, yeah. I could no, be no, like I try to eat meat uh, as little as possible. Uh, but yeah, sometimes... Yeah. You know, I was I was away, so uh, I was uh, traveling a little bit through Portugal this last weekend, and um, yeah, so I tried I tried a little tripas outside of Porto, which uh, was interesting. Oh, uh, I, you may have felt a little bit unfaithful to to Porto doing that. I guess what was it like? What was what was what was the local variety like? No, actually. It was very similar, but I still prefer the ones made here. Um, yeah. But it, it was similar. It was similar. It was in Regua, which is also in the north part still of okay. Portugal. So um, I guess it's not that different, you know. So no, okay. And and may I ask? Can I can I continue to ask questions about the tripe? Um, for anyone who doesn't know, it is the intestine, isn't it? Usually of 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 the a cow intestine. How is um, it? How is it? How, how how what's what's the recipe? You were asking me what's the recipe? <laughs> Roughly speaking, not, not, I don't need to know how many onions are in it and you know, how many <laughs> tablespoons of, 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 of salt or anything. But, but what, roughly speaking, does it come in, a, in a, like a stew or is it? Is yeah, it like it's a, like a, a stew with tripe and beans, uh, like white beans. And, um, yeah. you know, it has a very distinct sauce uh, with... Um, What's the name in English? That's that's my problem because I don't know the names of spices in English. But like it has a very distinct flavor. Like and you eat it normally with uh, rice, like white rice, and then you mix it. Yeah. And you also have that's a lot awesome. of enchidos. You know what's enchidos? No, well, enchidos. No, not familiar with that. Enchidos is like those uh, uh, kind of. Um, sausages you know that we make here like handmade where you put um, oh, okay. meat yeah, yeah. inside you would take a, a, yes yes a fragment of sausage in there and the beans so i get yeah. it I, I'm, I'm getting the, the, sense, the sense of the tree push i would like to try that actually sounds good and yeah. um i bought some for those for those anyone squeamish about offal um, I'm just going to carry on for a little bit longer here and tell you that I bought some chicken hearts because I do like a braised chicken heart. And that's an incredible, incredibly good value meal, um, the chicken heart, which you can buy very easily in a Portuguese supermarket for anybody who who uh, it, I, I, from the UK. I think offal became quite unpopular, although it's probably it's probably a highly prized thing now as, as the way these fashions often work. But you don't see you know the um the, the the packs of hearts and livers and 
the other thing, the Muedosh, is it? The gizzards, uh, in quite the same way as you do here in Portugal, back in Blighty. So I'll be making hearts, a heart, a braised heart stew myself soon. And I might take some of your uh, inspiration there. Put a few of those white beans in, maybe a little bit of sausage as well to go alongside and serve it with rice. Serve it with white Portuguese rice. Sounds excellent. Thank you for your for that little trip down Tripash Lane there. Um, and you say you've been on tour, Mia. Yeah. Have you been chasing this? <laughs> This, I, this is an interesting thing. As soon as there's some snow on the landscape, Portuguese people have to go and touch it. Yeah, that's true. So uh, there was some snow. It's really odd because, you know, it was quite warm here, even in Porto. And then we saw like last last uh, Friday, I think, I believe, we saw that there was the biggest snowfall in Portugal this year, in, in Serra da Estrela, which is like the high um, mountain in Portugal. So it's not super, super high. It's not like the Alps or something, but it is the highest point here in, in Portugal, the continental Portugal. Because like, if you count with the yes. Azores, then you have Pico, which is a higher mountain, I guess. Um, but yeah, here in Portugal, we have Serra de, in Portugal continental. We have Serra da Estrela, uh, so the star mountain, <laughs> you could say. Um, and yeah, yeah, we went there because, you know, I love skiing. It's a non-Portuguese thing trait I have because not a lot of Portuguese people go to ski, I guess. Um, but yeah, I tried it uh, already as an adult some, some years ago. And uh, I loved it. I, I actually didn't try it in Portugal. I tried it outside of Portugal in Switzerland, but I fell in love. So now if I see that there is a little snow and that there is a little opportunity <laughs> to go skiing, I go. Yes. Uh, if I yes. can. Uh, even, if, even if it means going shopping in Porto with your snowshoes on. You, they're, they're, near the, they're near the door just in case. Uh, and here we have it. I mean, it, it looks amazing. This is Vodafone's, and uh, the Vodafone very smartly took the opportunity to sponsor Portuguese I didn't skiing. know it was cold like this. You told me. I had no idea. <laughs> well, I just okay. So it's quite understated then, by the sound of it, which is a good thing. That's great. But it looks, it looks like proper skiing. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's more. I would say it's more for beginners because, like the, the ones that are harder like the black the black uh how do you say pistas we the call slopes. it pistas slopes yeah yeah. Pistol slope. yeah 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 so they were not open i guess um the other ones like the ones that were open were like the green blue and red ones yeah and they are a bit easier so for beginners like myself uh i think it's it's good in there superb um, yeah, but it, I, I find it funny because people always think that in Portugal it's always snow, uh, sunny and uh, warm, and but no, we, we do have a little bit of snow now and then. So, <laughs> and what are the facilities like up there? I mean, this will be a bonus. Uh, people hearing this for the first time, wow! Yes, I, I went for the sun. And I've got a bonus now. I can actually bring my skis when I move to Portugal um, <laughs> and, and go skiing once every five years as well. Amazing. What are the facilities <laughs> like up there, Mia? Um, you know, it's okay. They're okay. You have you can rent your own skis and, and uh, the board for snowboard as well. And oh, wow. the, the, how do you say, the, the head protection. Safety gear, yeah. Yeah, uh, you can rent it there. It's right next to the to the ski slopes, and um, yeah, it's it's normal, I guess. It's like in other places. Um, they they do have like one lift to go up, like one they call it chair lift or something, and then the others are more like these ropes that you put in between your legs, and then you are pulled up. I don't okay. know, if you know what I mean. But yeah, like it's not uh, the the fanciest place for skiing if you if you like, but like it's okay. You you can have sure. a lot of fun, especially if you're a beginner. And yeah, it's and the all important all sorry all important question for Portugal, of course, you can get something to eat, and more importantly, still with skiing, something to drink as well, right? Yeah, you have their bar, so 
There is a bar as well. So what is the traditional tipple um, when you've been, you know, the apres ski? What is the, is there a particular Portuguese favorite drink to have after a, a hard day on the slopes? I don't know, actually. That's the thing because Portuguese people are not big, big in skiing. So I don't know. I like like hot chocolate and something like that, something warm. But if, if you want to drink, then, you know, drink away because uh, drink away, but moderately okay responsibly <laughs> but with the um, with the uh, like you know after a while it becomes warm again so you can you know drink colder stuff as well so uh, I'm but thinking i don't know what would be else. a typical after skiing drink because it's not such a typical thing in portugal so Okay, um, uh, but let's, we could fall back on the tried and trusted Berrão, couldn't we, as a nice warmer, I think, or an Aguadent. An Aguadent go down pretty well after a hard day probably. skiing. Yeah, <laughs> I, some, of the, some of the people here, you see, just want to go and have the drink. They don't want to do the skiing. They just want to know what to have. <laughs> drink up there. Oh, all right. It's, it's really nice up there also for those who don't want to um, ski. Like you, I saw a lot, there was a lot of people, there were a lot of people because as you said, as soon as there's a little bit of snow, the <laughs> Portuguese go <laughs> yeah. to check it out because it's something we don't have here very often. So there, especially people with kids, you know, to try a little bit the sleighs down the snow. Of course. Um, yeah. And to see snow for the first time. You yeah, got the Portuguese snow kids. To yes. snow. And yes. to make some snowmen, I saw some carrots, yeah. carrots, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the joke, isn't it? What, what did one, what did one snowman say to the other snowman? It smells like smell carrots. Yes, can you smell carrots? Mm -hmm. Right, um, uh, Wikipedia, Vodafone underscore ski underscore resort. If you want to learn more about that, and uh, they are. Uh, uh, they, they are. Uh, have done very well, I think, to uh, get the sponsorship in there. So forever synonymous with Portuguese skiing uh, are the Vodafone Telecoms Company. Oh, Antonio's here. Uh, it's not Estrella. It, that's Spanish. It's Estrella with the one L. Thank you, Antonio Betancourt. Not for that. Estrella. It's Estrella. Estrella. Okay, not Australia or Australia. Australia. <laughs> Australia. Okay. Australia. Sarah of Australia. Thank you, Antonio. These things are important. We are talking about, of course, about Portuguese language and culture, so very important. And uh, Deagle has been studying every day, 15 minutes uh, since the 1st of January, Mia. So perhaps uh, we can acknowledge Deagle for that incredible job there. You get a thumbs up? You get a thumbs up from Mia. So is there any, anything particular on your mind at the moment that you're teaching students on your, your amazing online courses? Is, is there a theme this week that you've been uh, working with? Um, you know, like the... I, I'm always speaking about the pronunciation and how important it is um, to... Um, to check your pronunciation, like to, to, to pay attention to your pronunciation. Uh, yes. I mean, like, it's good to get a gist of all the sounds of Portuguese because you were just saying this estrella, it's yeah. not estrella, it's estrella. estrella. Uh, but we do also have this y when you have an LH in Spanish, is two L's in Portuguese, is LH. Yeah. Uh, and we also have the difficult N, you know, this yeah. nasal sound N, and um, which is also a headache for people. And I always say uh, to my students that to get, you know, to, to have a good head start, you should really start with the sounds of Portuguese and um, with the pronunciation, because this will help you not only speak in the long run, but it will help you understand what people are trying to say to you, which I know it's a big headache sometimes. So yeah. I even have a whole course, which is a speech course, which is uh, helping people with the sounds of Portuguese. And I do think it's very, very important to start there. Of course, not stay there, but start there, you know? <laughs> but this right. Yes, don't get stuck there, folks. Uh, it's a yeah. good starting point. And I will put a link into uh, where you can get started. Um, I with tell you, music. like, how to pr pronounce things. I show it with videos. 
from the front, oh, from the side, you know, I, I take people step thorough. by step. Um, Excellent stuff. All yeah. right, and, and I'll, put, I'll put a link into that so people get, can get started as well, uh, free of charge. Um, with with it's your with the, uh, the Kickstarter, uh, with the Kickstarter, Kickstarter. that's that's, yeah. that's a little bit different, though, right? Okay, so that was you were talking about part of of what you I do was, and, and the association. Well, yeah, tell so us a bit more. I was speaking about the speech course, which is more a course yeah. that is you know uh, focusing exactly on the sounds of the language and pronunciation and all that. Uh, yes. Where I also go through some. Uh, videos of native speakers speaking and then I analyze it with the students like I help them dissect a little bit what's being said uh, so that students can get used to these sounds uh, but the kickstarter that you are speaking about is my free course and they um, and their students can learn a bit of the basics you know and start having their first interactions in Portuguese um, it's kind of like to have a taste of Portuguese, if you if you will, and um, yeah. yeah. So and from there, then they can also check out the other courses and if they want. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Um, question for me, and then the questions are coming in. Uh, surely part of the problem is that pronunciation is so different from region to region. Uh, we mm -hmm. had some brummies over, and they found speaking and listening very different. Now, and that's just in English, I, I suspect, as well. So is that does that further complicate the problem? You know, there's a standard, um, I don't know what you would call it. What is, what is in the way that um, there's the Queen's English, what, what's, what do Portuguese say for the official Portuguese? Is there a phrase for that? Mm. <laughs> No, <laughs> I guess it's just Portuguese. Pro we don't really have this Queen's. Maybe you can say, yeah, I, I don't really know because like the the most standard Portuguese would be Lisbon Portuguese, I guess, like yes. because it's what is mainstreamed on TV. Um, yes. So, yeah, but I don't know. I never heard anyone saying "ah" oh, Portuguese Lisboeta or something like this. I don't think we really. We, we kind of avoid saying this, I guess, because I don't yes, know. Yes, it, it can only start a fight, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. And, um, so is that, is that a problem, though, the regional the regional uh, dialect, not dialects, but regional pronunciation of differences? Because, you know, it is definitely different, isn't it? Porto and Lisbon, just for example, you know, there's more swearing and there's, it's a, a kind of more to the point delivery of the language, I think, in Porto, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's not only in the accent, it's also a bit more in the way, you know, yeah. of, of speaking. But speaking about the accent, yes, definitely at first when you're learning, but this is with every language, you, you know, different accents will kind of throw you off a little bit like uh, what's going on here. But that's why it's important to listen to those sounds and listen to different people speaking which is what I do again in the speech course with the videos. Because like, this is a question of getting used to it, right? After a while, you will, um, you will understand it, even if there are different accents, you know? So you just have to stick to it. It's, it's always like this. Um, I wish I had a, a secret formula, but the, the, the key is to really, you know, get those sounds right and then explore you know go out try to listen as much as you can i always say listening is a very important thing speaking is also important but listening is also as important you know yeah. so um and you're you're gonna give time for your brain to get used to to the sounds so yeah yes. And it's perhaps more an art form than a science, isn't it? I mean, there, it's not like you can learn the right way and that's it forever. It, yeah, it's, exactly. It's, exactly. It's, it's, it's and learning to enjoy the process is perhaps as, as important as oh, the vocabulary yeah. and the grammar. Yeah, so well. you have to find your motivation. Yeah. Um, in, my, in my complete course, which is the all-in-one, that includes the speech course that I just spoke about and uh, also the master course and story time, which is like you learn through stories, through listening yes. to Portuguese stories that I, I wrote and I uh, read and then I make you interact with them. Um, in there, I, I also have a language learning 101, which is like a lot focusing on the motivation behind learning the language. And I think this is really also a key. It's like 
find your motivation, you know, and when you get like a bit disheartened, like, oh, this is so difficult, you know, just think about your goal and, you know, just go for it. It is difficult at first. I'm not trying to sugarcoat and say, I oh, know it's going to be so easy. You know, I know yes. it's difficult. I've also gone through learning languages and at times it's frustrating. I get it, but you can do this. So I believe everyone can do it. So yeah, no, I think for, thank you, Mia. That's really good advice. And, and, and for every moment of de desperation, I think there are lots of moments of mirth and merriment where if you can get used to, you know, not being excellent and being laughed at or laughed with, it's more often mm -hmm. the case that you'd be laughed with than laughed at, actually. Yeah. Right. Talking I saw someone saying that they were laughed at. Um, okay, we'll come back to that. Let's come back to that. Yeah, um, let's, we, we'll find a way of dealing with that. Don't you worry. Um, Pete's asking this question. Uh, can Mia tell us the difference between enthusiasmo, uh, excitado and animado? Uh, can you tell us the difference there? And is, okay, or so, is he being nutty? No, no. En enthusiasmado and animado and excitado should have yeah. their C. Excitado, yeah. Uh, so, like... Animado is what I, I guess it's like it's when someone I don't guess but I'm just thinking in English. Um, animado yes. is like if you are glad about something, you're happy about something, you're like uh, you feel good somehow. Yes. So animado, yes. so animado, it's like I, I feel good, I feel glad, I feel you know I'm happy. It's it's oh. uh, sorry. Stoked, maybe. maybe. Well, that might be going a bit too far. That's a bit Californian, it is, isn't it? A bit, a bit, yeah, maybe stoked is a bit higher. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, any mad is like, you're, yeah, you're feeling good, you know, about something. You are, estou animado. It's like, I feel good. Ou estou animada, if I'm a girl. Um, if I'm a girl. I am a girl, by the way. <laughs> uh, Carl, are you there? <laughs> Yes, uh, but yeah, sorry, I was. Uh, I, I, people are sending me things, and we're trying to find out if the prof's okay this morning. So I, I, I quickly clicked on WhatsApp, and it 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 does terrible things to the show. But we're back now; it's all good. Okay, okay, because I was I just said if I am a girl, I say any mother, and then I said I am a girl. By the way, yes, because <laughs> I'm saying if I am. Anyway, and then enthusiasmado is like, oh, it, I think enthusiasmado is more like what you would say, I'm excited about it, you know, to enthusiasmado. Uh, yeah. Excitado yeah. can be, can have a little bit of a naughty, uh, a naughty. Need, that's what you've been getting at. Yeah, well, so that's a kind of aroused, I suppose, then, isn't it? And yeah, it's more aroused, excitado, exactly. Yeah, exactly. All right, yeah. so now you know, Pete, and if you find yourself in a situation uh, where you're embarrassed, you've only got yourself to blame. It has now been explained to you, so uh, uh, you, you can you can you can explore that for, for at your own leisure um, with a bit of fun this weekend. Um, I always feel good when Mia is near. Says this is James. Um, he has these long names that he uses. They name this fruit after me. Banana. The, yeah, quite. Um, it, it, it doesn't make a great deal of sense until you contextualize it. Um, a marsh. Oh, I know why I was talking about Paul the other day. He's the, he's the, um, I was talking about him this morning. I met him the other day. He is the teacher, the American teacher who teaches geography and history. And he, he made the point that how, how would, how would a Martian news reporter explain something? Uh, and this would be a tough, a tough situation for a Martian news reporter to try and understand why a man has a picture of a banana and a yellow slug on his YouTube channel. Perhaps there's no explaining this and you need a good psychotherapist, which he is, of course, as well. Um, but anyway, bon dia, Mia. Maybe he doesn't need another and a colleague to help out with this. Bon dia, um, yeah. bon dia. Uh, and uh, with, uh, with Deagle's achievement, we're not worthy, says Francis. Well, we can all... Give it our best shot, can't we? Um, let's find out where we are in the comments here. Lots of questions in. Thanks for all of these this morning. Uh, Portuguese language and culture with Mia. And um, we do this when there's a fifth. We're blessed with a fifth Friday uh, yeah. this month. And that's why Mia is here. Uh, where are those questions this morning? Um, Sarah's in. Jim's. Oh, yeah, this is a cultural one. Is asking for more ice for your Coke considered? We, we touched on this earlier on, and we, we think Jim might have had his um, nose put out of joint possibly uh, with this, asking for a bit more ice in his Coke. Is it an ugly American thing? 
Uh, he no. doesn't like coke. Nobody does. So it might have just been a bit stressed inside the restaurant there. But my gelo, faz favor. Is that how you would my ask them? Gelo, por favor. Sim. Por favor. Queria mais yeah. gelo, por favor. You can Sim. ask. It's fine. Yeah, Sometimes you sure. get in a little ice bowl yes. thing. I don't know how to say it. Yeah, I would ice bucket and you can bucket, add, okay, add, add yeah, to your okay. hearts. And bucket doesn't sound like a very nice serving suggestion, does it? But anyway, um, this is a medical question, really. But what Pete could, I mean, if we can teach Pete how to ask his fellow farmers, a lot in central Portugal, it's, I think it's quite a cool thing to go to the cafe on your tractor. It's a bit like being a biker. You know, the bikers turn up on their bikes, don't they? Everyone knows you're a biker. You hang out with the bikers. And probably the farmers of central Portugal, sometimes they put their wife in the bucket at the front. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they go down the cafe on their own and have a, have a coffee with an agua dent. Um, sh sh shall we go into this or not? Because I mean, Pete could get into a lot of trouble asking other men in cafes how to sort out his painful bottom, couldn't he? <laughs> Let's, I have no idea how to ask yeah, that, you know. No, no, let's move on then. Um, another week, another weekend of boulder throwing, Pete. So yes, um, I don't think it's going to get any better uh, anytime soon for Pete. There, uh, other questions coming in for sure. Oh, Pam, uh, Paul, Lottie, and Louise. Uh, Louise and Paul, you were amazing last night on the webinar talking about uh, how to deal with uh, uh, or living comfortably in an older Portuguese home. We had a webinar last night, Mia, oh. where. We yeah, Thomas and Matthew were talking about how to uh, renovate and keep yourself nice and cosy. Um, it is a thing for a sure, isn't one. it? It's a good yeah. one. What, what are your personal strategies for staying warm in the winter? Do you use the traditional Portuguese three overcoat system? Yeah, I use my robe. Yeah. You know, robe, oh, very yeah. warm robe and socks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, old and, school. Uh, yeah, you have to... Pay attention to your windows and make sure they are covered and your the front door, you know, put one of those little uh sausagey things. Salsicha. <laughs> Salsicha of insulation, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, get yeah. the big sausage by the front and door. And be careful with old houses because they are more prone yes. um, to drafts and things like Indeed. that. Indeed, but spring yeah. is here and we won't even be bothered at all we'll forget that we were ever cold in the house exactly the um and that's how it works that's part of how the portuguese deal with it i think is to just move yeah. on basically. um just, are you going to any of the foodie events at the lady affair pam is asking owen so it may be that the lady affair is happening this weekend what a fantastic city that is to visit and a really good occasion uh, for which to do it uh, what's happening here? What's he talking about? Um, oh, that's, that's an at comment. I'm steering clear of those. A bon dia from a sunny Povo de Vajim. Now, this, of course, is the green coast, isn't it? And this is where a lot of the Porto people would go to the seaside. You go to Matosunhos and you go a bit further up to Povo de Vajim and those sorts of places. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. I guess uh, Povo de Vajim sometimes is a bit windy. I guess right. Mark can, can, can say that. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, but... Uh, it's very near, so we go there sometimes, yeah. Povo de Verzin and Vila de Guanz yes. and those areas there. The great thing about it is you can catch a train, can't you, from central Porto? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, you can go there. with the metro. The metro, yeah. isn't that amazing? Fantastic idea uh, for a day out. Um, what's this? This is Brummy. We've we've had you speaking Brummy, Brummy before now, haven't we? The Brummy dialect. Remember, apples go bad and too much gives you the belly ache or worse. I don't know why he's put that in there. Uh, but anyway, uh, Rebel Mama uh, helping Jim as well. My Jill, uh, special word. Okay. No, Carl. You did a terrific job of expressing your frustration with Microsoft. I don't need a psychotherapist. Okay. I'm complete with Microsoft for the time being anyway. Oh, I see. Yeah. And when the apples go off, you can make cider or Calvados. I want to ask you about this Portuguese culture question. Is there a Portuguese cider, Mia? It doesn't, the, the, you know, where I where I live in the Silver Coast, Alcabasa, you know, there is the Massa, the Alcabasa, there's a massive apple growing. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of apples. Uh, I'm not sure about the Portuguese cider, actually. I'm not sure. They might it's exist. Like, I just don't know it. No, it's weird, um, isn't it? Yeah, we have a lot of apples, so. And then you, <laughs> I guess and then people you might do it in their own homes, maybe. I hope so. I hope so. In a nice wooden barrel. Oh my goodness! I've got. But such... Maybe it's 
maybe someone that who is Portuguese. I see João Ferreira is here. Maybe yeah, they know if the there is a side there. I actually don't know. Okay. Maybe that's... I'm just forgetting. But um... well, there's so much to keep track of in Portuguese culture. You're forgiven. <laughs> yeah. You're completely forgiven. Yesterday, a little Pedengo a dog ran by my house with something big in its mouth. Oh no, it's like a comic. It wasn't a string of sausages, it was a dead chicken. And we had a herd of 10 cows, which is the biggest I've seen in front of our place. What a lovely lifestyle that is. You can't say that when you live in the middle of Lisboa, can you? You can say it when you live in Delhi, but you can't say it when you live in Lisboa. Uh, yeah. Andrew Gilchrist, uh, morning everyone. How are you doing, yeah, Andrew? Still, still I think wearing... someone is saying that there is a, a cider called Bandida do Pumar, and okay. also in Madeira. Oh, that's a long way to go for a cup of cider, though, isn't it? Uh, Bondi, <laughs> Bondi here from Bob this morning. Centigrade is fine. They've made the conversion, some of the Americans here. And I texted Prof and will report back. Excellent. Um, to all man cavers, I haven't set up the links as yet, but I will later today. Okay, uh, man cave tonight, of course. And um, massage and possible veet strips. That's what they do in the man cave. That sounds horrible. Um, I, I'm not a tripe eater either, just for the record. So even though he's from the north, he's not a tripeater. Um, Mia, welcome to what, uh, Carl's wonderful chat room. One day I'll be able to say it in Portuguese. Well, today's the day, Moaz. I think we can help Moaz figure out how to say welcome to the wonderful chat room, surely. Yeah, bem-vinda. If you yeah. say it to a girl, which yeah. I am. <laughs> <laughs> sure help. And bem-vindo, if it's for uh, a man or a boy or... Yeah. yeah, and I suspect you would just say chat room as well, wouldn't you? It's one of those kind of technological things. Bem, that wouldn't bem ao, ao chat. Chat. Okay, good. Chat. Um, <laughs> chat. I, I've tried to speak Portuguese uh, with a normal, regular pace at the ice cream shop here in Montijo. Tell us more about Montijo as well, if you will, this morning. It's a good choice, south of the river there, with a lovely view of Lis Lisboa. Uh, but they didn't understand. I slowed down to enunciate, and they made fun of me. Ah, this is the one. So th we've got some counselling to do here, as, mm -hmm. as well as some technical uh, support here. What so there are one of, yeah. of two reasons. First one is they are idiots. <laughs> can happen everywhere and i'm sorry if you had to deal with with idiots uh second reason is sometimes portuguese people might sound like they are mocking you but in fact what they think is that you're really cute for trying yes and we can't help but smile and laugh with you and not at you uh, the, I know sometimes it's difficult to understand this, but um, I don't think that m the majority of Portuguese people are actually mocking you. It's more like they are in, how, how can you say, they, they find you cute, you know? So then they, yes. they, they smile and they, they think, yeah, like maybe they, they, they find it cute the way that you pronounce things, but I don't think... The majority of people want to mock you actually it's just the way that we deal with this you know we did we didn't have a lot of tourism uh i don't know 10 years ago maybe 15 years ago and now we have and i think people are getting used to the different accents and different you know it's it's for us like almost like news to have people trying to speak portuguese you know so um yes. i don't know but again they, they might have been just idiots, uh, and I apologize. Yeah, and uh, I mean, look at you. You look cute to me, David, and I imagine they were laughing with not at you. And and I think being in the vulnerable situation amplifies things as well, doesn't it? You can you can hear and yeah. see things that aren't there when you when you feel a little bit on the spot and vulnerable. So our, our I think our collective advice here is to keep going. Um, what David might... is saying he is really cute. Pete knows yeah. that about me. I'm seeing a it's comment here. Yes. So yeah. you have your answer. You're really cute. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe they were just embarrassed to be in such in the company of such cuteness as yeah, well. There exactly. is that. There is that. And um, you know, I, I, what can we else can we say to David? You know, uh, maybe uh, can. Uh, what, what what would you say if you if you can't be heard? Like, what would you like me to say, or how do I say? How do I say is quite a good. Uh, icebreaker, isn't it? If you're Sim. in a Portuguese situation. Yeah, yeah. Como se diz? Yeah, como you can se say, diz? 
Como yes. se diz, and then you say whatever it is you want to say, or you point to it. Yes. Como se diz, you know, yeah. something exactly. like so that. There, there's another little phrase for you, David, to try. Or just break down in tears on the floor. Yeah, and... or you just say, desculpe, estou a aprender. And be beat your chest and, and break down in tears into a, into a howling wreck on the floor. And really give them something to um, think about um, in, in that shelf if they've been unhelpful to you. Let us know how that goes. Um, bon and if they are idiots, they are always the international sign language you can use. <laughs> exactly. You can give them the old Iberian slap, can't you? Which is a famous Portuguese thing. I'm not going to do it on the screen just in case. Use it with care. Use it with use care. It with because care. mostly yeah. they are trying, they, are, they, they think you're cute. So again. Yes. Right. And also, the other thing that David might be bringing is his own sense of humor, because I think the American and English cultures are a little bit more savage in that way of laughing at people openly and becoming more so. And I don't think Portugal's so much like that, which is a beautiful thing, another beautiful thing to say. I mean, of course, there are going to be people who are going to take the rise out of you, and that's just human nature. But I just don't think it's as savage and as obvious here um, as it is where you've come from. So you might be oversensitive even uh, there, David. Uh, let, let's let's see what you make of that. Uh, bon dia, alegria mia. Great to have you here. Oh, bon dia, alegria mia. It's great to have you here. I'm a poet, and I didn't even know... I was one. That bit could have rhymed better, actually, Francis, but well done. Uh, Brian's here as well late again. Uh, it would be better to say I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Exactly. Unless he was making an ironic non-poetry sort of joke, a non-rhyming joke there. Okay, you shouldn't ask. Okay, no, we're not doing that, Pete. Um, Benvindo means welcome for men and Benvindo for a woman. So there you go, Moaz. We have got you sorted. You can say that. Uh, Antonio F., perhaps talking about northern types of food here the no 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 food. it's these enchidos that uh, come with the tribes oh, okay the different kinds of sausage that go in there so if, let's yeah. let's break this down chorizo a national favorite chorizo. yeah everybody knows what chorizo is don't they um paya what's that <laughs> that's an interesting question because i don't know how to explain it like i don't know the name in english uh but it's also it's also with meat. Maybe you can Google it and put an image there like you normally do. It's Good easier, idea. probably. Good idea. See. Access to all of this at my fingertips. Now, I suppose you could say the whole thing about sausages. You're not meant to know what's in it. That's the whole point <laughs> of sausage, isn't it? But it, it actually... It's more like chorizo is softer, softer. Yeah. Payo is like harder somehow the way that you... Um, oh, okay, yeah. I just had to check the pictures first because you've got to be careful googling sausage, obviously, uh, on a live <laughs> radio show. So um, I'm going to show everybody my sausage now. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Let me just get this sorted out so that we can show the results. Pio is the correct pronunciation, right? Pio. Yeah, Pio. 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 Uh, Aliera, we know, don't we? That's a, 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 yeah. A real, Aliera a, is the that's a chicken sausage, isn't it? But there you yeah. go. There's your there's your Pio. Which, yeah, well, yeah as think, you see, it's not as soft inside, you know. Yeah, yeah, and it's a fatter sausage as well, isn't it? Chorizo mm -hmm. tends to be a bit of a skinnier sausage than that, doesn't it? But there you go, mm -hmm. Pio, yeah. different kinds of sausage that get put in, you might say, to add a bit of flavor. Um, because tripe does need seasoning, doesn't it? I mean, it is quite, uh, it's not, I don't think yeah. it's particularly flavorsome in its yeah. own right. So, and you have to be careful also if you don't like how can i say soft squishy thing somehow like the 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 texture is a bit at first you might think it's um weird yes yeah. true and, and that's why tripe does have a bad reputation the world over i think because of the texture it is a strange texture and one perhaps if you're brought up as, as a comfort food not unlike chicken livers i do love a chicken liver myself um which what's, what's the word where something is cooked in its own juices um oh i can't remember owen might be able to help us out but chicken livers in a bit of butter um and a, maybe a splash of beurre on that and some seasoning very nice indeed very good value too i don't um, like so much um chicken yeah. inside some... things i like muella <laughs> okay uh, they're so chewy but anyway i got made fun of from my portuguese friend yesterday because i pronounced tarta de masa Instead of tarta, oh, so masa, masa, it's a classic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, masa, yeah, go on, sorry. Versus masa, 
Masa yeah. is like pasta. Yep. Or well, or dough. dough is, yeah, dough. And masa is apple. So I guess. I'm, I'm, yeah, I think it's a shame because I mentioned before the um, apples of Alcabasa. Mm -hmm. If it was, you know, masa the Alcabasa would be a much better rhyme, wouldn't it? But obviously the pasta of Alcabasa isn't famous. It is the masa the Alcabasa, uh, yeah, which isn't. Exactly. Yeah, but, you know, that's just that's just me and the things I think about when I'm shopping. Um, <laughs> David, you shouldn't be eating all that dairy anyway. There's another solution to that uh, ice cream challenge there. Uh, hola, bon dia, kids from a blazingly sunshiny, gorgeous Praia de Rocha. Ah. Oh, that does sound good, doesn't it? Um, I always enjoyed my mum's rendition of stuffed beef heart. Oh, my goodness. Braised chicken heart sounds like a very small... <laughs> That's true, because they are, like, small. Yeah, you have, to have, you have to eat them in some volume there. Uh, Mia, just up the road from us, did you see any cows in the mist? The Estrella... Estrella are absolutely beautiful. Yeah, did you see any herds of cows wandering about? Yeah, uh, I saw. I saw, yes. I saw. Oh, I saw. So not not there on the top, but I saw it around there. So was it nice to get out of the city for a bit? Sorry? Was it nice to get out of the city for a little while? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the yeah, the air yeah. of the mountain is priceless. I really like it. Yeah. I, and I also went, uh, uh, how do you say, um, ice skating. I tried. Really? Yeah, there was like a, a little uh, rink for ice skating there uh, in the Pousada da Juventude, so near the youth hostel. Oh, uh, is, that what, is that what a Pousada is? Yeah, Pousada uh, da Juventude. There is Pousada uh, without Juventude, so that's for <laughs> not for youth. Uh, <laughs> no, like there is Pousada, which is just a kind of a hotel thingy. And then yes. there is Pousada da Juventude, which is youth hostel. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, because there's a Posada overlooking uh, the San Martino mm -hmm. de Porto Bay. And I just wondered what that was, you know, because Pension is, uh, is also a word for a hostel, isn't it? Pension is, yeah, is a Yeah, Pension hostel. is like a small hostel kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. okay. Posada okay. is a bigger thing. It's more like a hotel, uh, but okay. normally... Um, you have some posadas that are like recovered buildings or something like that, you know, like old buildings that have been transformed into a hotel or so. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're a little bit more typical, or I don't know how to say, you know, like yeah, in, in nicer locations or, you know. Yes, yes, certainly the one that's look, overlooking San Martino has, has that vibe to it. But you found a nice ring, what, a, a real one or one of these plastic ones? No, like it was a real one. I, I, they say it's the only one that is made with the, like naturally. Somehow. Good. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. So it's, it's proper slippery because the plastic ones, I don't think they work very well, do they? They could cause more injuries than yeah. the, the ice ones because it's, it's kind of hard to, to, to work on. But anyway, a few years ago, says uh, Louise, we visited Serra de Stella. On the 1st of August, at the top, it was only 15 oh. it, on the 1st of August, isn't it? And, and Convilien uh, was yeah. Uh, 32. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? What a difference in temperatures there. And, uh, yeah. yeah, what an amazing place that is as well. Fantastic. Uh, thanks, Louise, for that. Uh, hola, bon dia. Love it up on the tour. We have been a few times on a coach and the kids... Oh, the Kids Karate Club went tobogganing up there as well. Mm -hmm. so much oh, fun. Torre. Torre is like the highest point in, in Serra da Estrela. Torre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 100 meter cables, lots of expletives, and more busy times there for Pete on, the, on, his, on his allotment. Um, drink away moderately, um, is Elra is un underlining our, 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 not our warning to everybody, but I suppose serving suggestion. And thank you, Antonio, for that. Uh, what brings you here this morning, Antonio? Great to have you here. Um, and I don't know why this randomly is in here. Oh, it's connected to this comment. There's a fantastic restaurant on the way uh, to the cellar there called O Albertino in uh, Folgozinho. If I said that right, Folgozinho. Fulgozinho, um, you said it right, yeah, but I don't okay. know. Fulgozinho, put that on your list, everybody, on the ever-growing list of experiences to have in Portugal. I've often said that my idea of a good time in the snow is looking at it from a large, war sorry, from a warm lodge with a hot drink in hand. That does sound really very good. Um, question from Mia. Oh, that was the, the regional um, pronunciations. I think we dealt with that. 
And my goal for speaking Portuguese is not for native Portuguese to think I'm speaking like a native with no accent, but to not know where I'm from. That's quite a good goal to have, isn't it? Um, yeah, is it very it is. is it very obvious the difference between a British person speaking Portuguese and an American person speaking Portuguese? I guess, uh, yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> but this is this is a very good thing because, like, when I was speaking about my speech course, uh, yeah, I I I make you listen to native speakers, but the goal is never that you will speak like a native because, you know, that's if you can, that's awesome. But you know, after a certain age pronunciation, like pronouncing things as a native speaker is quite difficult. Like you, you'll probably never get native like pronunciation, but that's exactly, I think also the majority of people, that's not their goal. The goal is really to be able to get around and, um, you know, and not being mocked at or laughed at, or I guess like, to, and, this is also a good goal, not that people don't know where you're from. That's that's awesome. That's an awesome goal. I think and, so. He's uh, a smart guy. He's, he he constantly surprises us um, with these with these sorts of uh, insights, and I think that's great because you know my um, you know I I think it's funny when my fellow Brits go into a shop and it's like, "Hola, bon dia," you know, and you know it's a British person, don't you? And it's probably the same with a you know an American, isn't it? Hola, bon dia, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 to have to have someone say, "Where are you from?" Your Portuguese is great. Where are you from? That will be a, a brilliant milestone to achieve. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, German, uh, Dominic. A little, might a little bit of accent is always endearing. I find it's always cute. Again, cute, okay. David. Cute and laughing with, not at. Um, so Dominic might appreciate this. The German equivalent to Queen's English is "hoch," "hoch," Deutsch, and oh, his gosh. native is spoken. Uh -huh in the area around Hanover. Mm -hmm. So is that where posh German people come from? Hanover. Um, our Aldea, the village, has a different dialect, colloquialisms, and tone to our nearest town even. That's amazing, Louise. Mm -hmm. Oh, and um, Carl, we need to set Joel straight. Uh, I think it's going to take um, a good team on that um, to set Joel straight. What a character he is. A legend of the man cave, Joel. Good evening, um, it's always a good evening to ha having him around for the man cave. I'll check him out tonight. I told him the R is an aspirated H, and he tried to tell me it's a rolled R. I'm Lisbon. He's going to mess me up with his Porto accent. You've got to be careful who you, who you hang out with, right? That's another thing, isn't it? It's, it's, you know, the people you speak Portuguese with are going, to, are going to rub off on you, as it were. You know, but if he's with a Porto accent person, he's in a good company, I have to say. There you go, David, you see? Roll with no, it. but like the, the R is not an aspirated H, not even in Lisbon, I guess. <laughs> ah, there, you, there you go. You see? No, but it's also not really a rolled R. So <laughs> oh. we have here a kind of a, um, you know, it's not a, an aspirated H and it's not an, a rolled R. It's something in between. So it's like a. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like, you know, because the rolled R, I guess, like that's a yes. rolled R. And, and there an are some regions in Portugal, in the north, not in Porto, actually, but more in the north that do that. Um, but the most common is something in between the aspirated age and the rolled R. Again, I see I get into detail about this in the speech That's course. Fine. Like, I, I really explain how to do it, but it's basically... Oh, sorry. I beg your pardon. Sorry, that was incoming, incoming day. Yeah, we nearly had a rave on our hands there. We'll come back to that in just a minute. We'll finish I was, the show I was on that. prepared to, to dance. You were, you were. You were suddenly rolling your R's there uh, to that. Um, so, uh, but what is an aspirated H then? That's the, it's not quite, is that the I guess like, sound? No, the aspirated H would be a, I don't know. It's like. So, like yeah. Either it's way, like you're going to get people to no. Okay. So is, uh, it, is it the like... dig get... <sighs> so grab the defibrillator. If someone's aspirating their H's in the cafe. All right. You don't say okay, so... hatu. You don't say hatu. You say hatu. Okay, David. Well, I hope that clears things up for you. <laughs> Try a Saurian Portuguese lol, says Antonio. Uh, and one day we will. We just need to get the basics right first. Uh, a continental mainland. Uh, 
Portuguese, if we if we may, Antonio, before going there. Uh, yes, in my search for a standard Portuguese, like standard English in the US, has eventually led to trying Lisbon Portuguese, the closest I will get, apparently. So there you go. Yep, on the right tracks there, as, as Mia said earlier on. Uh, everything in our area of central Portugal is shh, and a little Spanish creeps in as well over that way. Abel, morning, people. I heard that the Coimbra Portuguese. Oh, here we go. Controversy. Coimbra mm. Portuguese is well, the Queen's English. Coimbra Portuguese is the most neutral Portuguese. That's that's what um, okay. we say. But again, like on TV, you will hear Lisbon Portuguese. Um, yes. Yeah. And I don't know. Here we don't really have a, a standard Portuguese, I would say, but if so, if you want to search for it, I would say the ones um, that are on TV and they, these are more are closer to Lisbon. Lisbon. And there you go. Elra very helpfully is giving us the TV news channels where you where you will hear that sort of standard Portuguese. Uh, Nazik, good morning to you. Listening to my pronunciation wasn't enough. Most can't tell the difference. One has to work with the sound muscles. Oh, there's a new concept for us. Uh, that's how I changed my accent from Asian to American. I followed Jane Wellborn CD. So sound muscle work, a workout. Um, that sounds very strenuous. Yeah, to but me, uh, exactly. Because... That's what I go also through with the uh, how to do it, you know, like. Sounds exactly. muscle workouts. So like me as well as Jane. Okay. Um, find and learn one way of speaking to start. Then we can work on understanding others. Yeah, that's right. You got definitely. Oh, that's a... uh, Mia, I'm looking at this like, I'm looking at it like this. There are more much more stupid people than me that can speak perfect Portuguese. So I definitely can learn it. Well, if that works for you, fair enough. Sounds a bit harsh to me. Um, in the total of my six months of experience in Portugal, any effort I make to speak Portuguese has resulted in a relaxing, softening and warming of the heart and continued interaction. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, really nice. Uh, lots of smiling eyes under the masks. And those masks have gone now, of course. Yeah. That's fantastic. Okay, the music you heard. Uh, just now was a, an amazing thing that's happened uh, in Portugal. Uh, well, actually in Lisboa. Let me just pop to the screen now. These crazy cats from the United Kingdom who turned up just recently. Did you see this, Mia? Five young kids came over from <laughs> from UK. <laughs> Look at them. Oh my god! And they. Yes, I think did they do this on the Revolution Day? I don't on Freedom Day. I'm not sure. But will you take a look at that? Parkour oh enthusiast. This, this particular one. Instant sweaty palms, I get. It, just, just looking, right? Should we have the music for a minute then? Let's play the music as well that you could hear just now. Alive, the music says. I bet. Look at that. Look at that still there. And they apparently, are crazy. they are crazy, aren't they? Um, Vinti Singh Dabril Bridge arrested for 35 hours, strip searched, GoPro seized, and sent to court. First ever trip out of the UK, and we nearly landed in prison. <laughs> but that is such a good photo. We cannot condone this sort of behavior, but I do have to share that with you. Thanks, T Duck, for sending us sending us that it's just incredible isn't it and i have what a way super to... sweaty palms i don't know i have like it's incredible isn't I'm it i'm afraid of heights <laughs> yeah it's amazing and look there sat on the edge of i don't know uh, the uh a hotel nearby or something bonkers a uh, daring ducky 69 i was hope i did send them an instagram message to see if they'd like to join us on the show this morning but maybe they're still in prison i don't <laughs> i don't know but that is that is extraordinary and bringing us to the top of the hour, uh, Mia, I live in Swajo and up here further north, I've never heard por favor or como estás, only se faz favor and tudo bem. Also, when would you use se calhar instead of talvez? Talvez meaning maybe, right? Yeah, so, both mean maybe. Se calhar and talvez both mean may maybe. Um, yeah. Talvez, is, I would say, is a little bit more formal than se calhar. Yes. Uh, and also, like the way that you uh, use the grammar is different with se calhar and talvez, because with se calhar, you can use the indicative form, so the normal form. You can yeah. say se calhar vai chover. 
while with talvez you have to use the con conjuntivo, so you would have to say talvez vá chover. So okay. again, it's very difficult to explain everything here, but in my courses, I, I speak about this as well. But basically between se calhar and talvez, there is not a big difference. It's more that talvez is used in formal uh, contexts more. And then with por favor and como estás, yeah, I guess like it's a bit more common in the north to say se faz favor and to do bem, but um, yeah. Because again, por favor and como estás are a little bit more formal than se faz favor and to do bem. So um, I would say se faz favor and por favor, I guess are almost the same. Uh, but yeah, maybe here in the north we use more se faz favor. Okay. Which is like not even se faz favor, we just say faz, faz favor. Yes, I've noticed. Like. I've noticed. So the side of question, oh yeah, and Gary was talking earlier to Apple users. Um, Carl, yes, Bandida do Pomar is the Portuguese cider. I'll have to look out yes. for that. Good cider and uh, not my preferred though. So what is your preferred? And there is a cider, says Antonio, uh, Madeira, Madeira Island as well. Carl and Matty, very welcome. This is the webinar last night. We've learned a lot about keeping our home warm. It's a beautiful house, actually, and what you've done. You've kept the Portuguese tradition <clears throat> and made it a little bit warmer there, which is a, an amazing achievement. Uh, staying cool and the varying humidity during the years here. The Shisto buildings are over 100 years old. You've done it very beautifully. Madeira Cider is only local in bars and cafes, not commercialized. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds even better. That's what it? I said. Yeah, right. Oh, how do you ask a fellow passenger to stop swearing for two hours and 20 minutes? There are children on the plane. Now, they're probably not Portuguese, I suspect. They sound like they might be British <laughs> to me. So um, how about you stop swearing? Because <laughs> there are kids here. Um, para, can I para de dizer as neiras, you can say. Okay, stop if you do swearing. Need, there is neiras, she's swearing, is it? As neiras. Dizer, dizer as neiras, as yeah, swearing. The bad, the bad words, Okay. Um, all right, and uh, last few comments then. Thank you so much for being here this morning, Mia. It's been lovely to chat with you. I will try to find one of the old granite buildings, but now after yesterday's webinar, Gisto might be an alternative, says mm -hmm. Matty. Gisto buildings are beautiful, aren't they? A central Portugal phenomenon. Uh, yeah, okay, to, 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 what's the name? Um, Piodão, right? What is that? Piodão, yeah, Piodão is a, a, a village, a whole village. Made oh, the most yeah. to houses. It's really beautiful. It is incredible, isn't it? Really, really great place to go. Uh, bon fin semana. Paul has just started the cement mixer, so that's my call to start rebuilding walls. Wow, you're still at it uh, with that work. Look at that. Moaz agrees that you're cute as well. So, if his ego is, if his ego has been at all bruised by his recent experiences, I think he's getting a lot of. A lot yeah, of David is like going out of here thinking he's the cutest person alive. Exactly, he's got a different problem now. Uh, como se diz? Uh, I told them, estou tentando aprender português. Sorry, no compose key. Oh, look at you. Um, so, so, maybe try, estou a tentar aprender português, because tentando is more used either in Alentejo or Algarve or maybe Açores, but like the main Portuguese, let's say, we say a tentar instead of tentando, but... But look uh, at this. Oh, should have oh. understood that, though. So well yeah. done. Right. Look, look at this. We um, we uh, went to you know all out sympathy for him, and he's saying, you know what? It was totally fine. We laughed at my Portuguese. It was fine. Oh, make your mind up. Um, we we almost initiated a full psychotherapeutic intervention to help you this morning. Um, I don't think there is a, an English word for bio. <laughs> but it's made from pork. Yeah, it's made from pork. Yeah. Yes, um, and and we use the word very loosely, I suspect, in this in this context. I can't drink cider. I like it though, but I don't think the good people of Alvaz are ready to see me running around with my underpants on my head, singing "Glory, Glory, Hallelujah." Yes, such a <laughs> you don't want to be bringing Somerset <laughs> to El Viagra. Um, so fair enough. Stay off the cider, please. Uh, last question, I think, then, for Mia. Do I need to add the article all oh, before Carl when I say Bon dia or Carl e Torosh? That's actually, that's, well, actually a, a good question because a lot of people get this wrong. So you only use the article if you're not addressing the person directly. So if you're speaking about the person, then you say O Carl é meu amigo, for example. 
you know. Yeah. But if you're speaking to Carl directly, then you just say Bon dia, Carl, because yes. you're addressing him. So you don't yes. say Bon dia, o Carl. Uh, now about todos, you put a a before, but that's different. That's not or uh, it's not the article. It's like because you're saying Bon dia to everyone, you know, like a todos. Uh, yeah. it's not the article in this sense so uh, you're just saying good morning all but here in Portugal we say good morning to all so we say bom dia a todos but okay. if you're speaking to the person like a person directly like Carl or Mia or so you don't put the article then just say bom dia Carl bom dia Mia etc okay uh, that's great to know. Thank you very much for that, Mia. And a, a little testimonial there for your um, your wonderful uh, course. Oh, thank you. Um, I, we do. Have you got a couple more minutes? Because we do have a suddenly we have a serious issue to address here this yes, morning. Sure. Um, thank you. Um, this is from um, Kay Watson. Um, I think the name was, and uh, I must find it again. Oh yeah. Hi. Is there a problem? Uh, says Kay Watson with the people in the Algarve. We are finding them rude, especially to my wife, who is of a different colour. Um, we are changing our minds about where we want to retire to. And thanks, everybody, for coming uh, to, to the aid of Kay Watson uh, and Kay Watson's wife here. We don't like to hear of this. Uh, wow, I'm a bit surprised, says Rebel Mama, only because I've heard the opposite um, from people of colour. Sorry about that. P Portuguese people are usually very open and nice. And I I'm sure we would all agree with that here. Um, and uh, we are keen to help. And, and, and uh, I, I don't know. Uh, outweigh this uh, awful experience that you both of you are having. Portuguese are usually used to being around lots of nationalities. There are idiots everywhere, though, in every country, says Elra. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Rebel Mama, oh, no, Pete, don't let a few bad apples skew your view. We have found the people welcoming, warm, and accepting to a fault. Uh, there you go. So um, we're really sorry to hear that. And I do think that's exceptional, um, Kay Watson. So, um, you know, I hope that improves for you. I'm a person of color system. I've been to Lisbon twice and found the people very friendly. Uh, but in the Algarve, the people might be tired of tourists of all races. Mm. So it might be a, possibly a more general thing. And yes, certainly do have a look at other parts of Portugal as well. Maybe get out of the. Portugal intensive... people are very nice. <laughs> of course they are. Of course they are. Um, <laughs> And uh, going back to, oh, a, a stupid person says, well, if you're generally born stupid and will probably die stupid. That's some straightforward Portuguese talk there. That is true for all countries. I think you just happen to step on a rotten apple. So all kinds of yeah. apple talk this morning, including bad apples. And we're so sorry to <laughs> hear true. that, Kay Watson. Keep going. Uh, Ma, Ma, Mas, Masanto Dona Maria always makes me giggle in thinking of the show. Hello, hello. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, Masa yeah. That is that is a, um, a a village, isn't it, in central Portugal? Um, Masanto Dona Maria, I don't know, is it? That's a, it's a lovely little name. village. Yeah, lovely little village in central Portugal. Um, can you help people with flat tongue syndrome? A bit like flat foot. I can't roll my eyes to the delight of mocking of Rima, wife Rima. Look at him. What can I do with him? We don't know, Chris. <laughs> she has our sympathy. Oh, bless you, mate. Um, with that. So I think we will leave that. Elra not wanting me to encourage the parkour enthusiast. No, definitely not. Uh, but it was, I mean, that was quite something, wasn't it? That footage there. Uh, I can neither text nor speak well, and I forget where I come from. <laughs> this morning, we, I don't know where to begin with that, Ubi, especially at this late hour. Uh, I'm no connoisseur of ciders, but I prefer sweet drinks. So Copa Berga is my favourite, which I think we could safely say is not Portuguese. Thank you so much, Mia and Carl, for making these moments possible. Bon fin de semana a todos. Bon fin de semana. Palavrão, more like swearing. Yeah, you can also say. So you can say these are as neiras or these are palavrões, which is like, palavrão is like a bad word. Like, oh, okay. All right. So, just a shist there. Obrigado. Uh, obrigada. I beg your pardon, Mia. Don't forget to follow that like button. Uh, Gumpers, bon fin semana. So, in, any, anything else we can say as well as bon fin semana? What, well, how can we send people into their weekend uh, joyously uh, and, and in an upbeat way, as, as, is, as is the way we like to do it? How the Gumpers roll here, Mia? Yeah, I think bon fin semana is the best way. Uh... <laughs> You can say in, in a more complete way, you can say Tain um bom fin de semana, have a good weekend. Um, yeah, I guess Tain that's the best way, really. 
Okay, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Mia. One more time then, if people want to give it a go on the Kickstarter. Uh, there it is on the screen now. Click on that link, it, as you can see. It's and all the, the all-in-one that someone said they really liked, just check it out as well because you've got a lot of things. You get a, a whole lot of value. All right, superb. Yeah. And uh, check my YouTube channel because I'll be... I'll, I'll be making a video on the snow trip. Just, you know. Okay. All right. James is jumping in. Thanks for that. So if people search for Mia Ejmeres, they're going to find you on YouTube, aren't they? Um, how about have a great weekend. Até próxima, Mia, from Antonio. Or you can say, tenha um excelente fim de semana. That's a great weekend. Excelente. is a great weekend. All right, Mia. Thank you very much for that. Obrigada. Beijinhos, tchau, tchau. There she goes. And I'm, I'm going to um, try and find this uh, video that uh, Garvo has sent in and anything else that's happening on. Uh... Oh, we've got video from, uh, from Gene as well. Okay, so what might happen here, folks, is that the show might crash temporarily or get a bit bumpy. It'd be like being on an airplane. Welcome aboard this flight into the weekend, everybody. Um, we're just about to download some videos, so please fasten your safety belts. But this is fantastic. Gene is at Orient, which I want to uh, share with you, so stand by. I'm going to keep talking. Oh, the Alpha Pendulum. Okay. That is quite superb. I'm going to be sharing that with you in just a moment. Bear with it. It's worth it, honestly. Um, it is worth it. And the bridge that the kids were playing on there, um, I have here as well to share with you. My, my tip for the day from Gary Austin. Oh, yeah. That have just come in here. Stay here. I haven't seen it. I cannot be responsible for the contents of the message I'm about to play you, but I suspect it's going to be pretty awesome. Um, and let me add it to the video deck now and play you out for the weekend with it. Uh, thank you, everybody else, for your wonderful um, contributions throughout the show today. It's been absolutely marvelous to be hanging out here uh, with you and with Mia. So let me bring those videos onto the screen now. I wonder which order I should play these. Here's here's an image. Uh, this is uh, Orient Station, the beautiful architecture of Orient. Actually, no, before I play that, the beautiful architecture of the Orient Station in the Alpha Pendula video, let me just put onto the screen a lovely still from Jean. That's crossing the Vinci Sink Dabriel Bridge there, isn't it? Uh, where those kids had scaled. That, that looks like a much more uh, conducive height uh, to be crossing the bridge out there. Uh, let me pop these two videos in, and then we'll send you on your way for a Born Finsemana or a Finsemana Excellence. Um, first off, then, the video to... I think this is uh, this is going to be Gene's trip to the Algarve via the Alpha Pendula railway system here in Portugal. And I think you can get some good bargains at the moment. Check this out. Oh, that's fantastic, isn't it? That is um, Orient Station and the Alpha Pendula coming in or just leaving um, to take Gene down to the Algarve. So then a final uh, thought for the day from Garvo that's been sent in. I think this is going to be good. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody, and I'll play the outro straight after this. Take care. See you on Monday. This is where you should be. Feel good Friday. And the chicken. And the nightingale. The hills and the sunshine. Do it this weekend.